Welcome to this final lecture in our series on discipleship. We trust that as we have explored this very important matter of what it means to be a devoted disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have experienced a time of very significant growth in your own journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing what it means to be his disciple, understanding the, the crucial issues so that we may begin to build our relationship with him and structure that relationship in ways that honour him. In this lecture, we are pressing on to understand, I guess, the ultimate goal in our lifestyle of discipleship. And that is helping others to become his disciples or making disciples. Now, through this time together, we've come to a clearer understanding of what it means to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have seen that a disciple is one who is inwardly submitted to Christ, who is committed to abiding daily in the reality of his presence and the resulting transforming power at work in our lives, who then so live out his glory, this living reality in our world, that others are turned to Christ. Now, that's a wonderful process. But of course, it's never just sufficient to bring someone to Christ. Our real goal is to complete this diagram and to see them embark upon the journey into discipleship and go on to become his devoted disciples. And of course, that whole process of becoming devoted disciples requires someone to walk alongside them much as we have had someone to walk alongside us through this particular course. And so that's what we're on about. Now, of course, this leads us full circle back to where we began, which was at the Great Commission. And you remember right back there in lecture number one that we realized that the great mandate of the Great Commission is not go. In fact, the only command we find in this passage of Scripture is make disciples. We saw that all the other things, the going, the baptizing, the teaching, are in fact the outgrowth. They are part of the setting the scene, the methodology for this process of making disciples. We realized that we could take this particular passage and we could translate it in this way. And having gone, or wherever you find yourself, now the command, be a disciple maker. And the way you go about that is baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's that outward public declaration of the inward life and transformation and teaching them to observe all that he has commanded us. And so that instruction, that building into someone's life to help them understand what it is that they have received in that moment when they said to Jesus, yes, I will follow you. And so we've come to this full circle. And now we're looking at the process whereby we help someone else become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, of course, this Great Commission focuses us again on something I've already referred to. It focuses us on this issue that a person does not become a disciple in the moment they say yes. Being saved is a point in time. Yes, Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. 
I believe that you died on the cross for me. I come to you. I confess my sin. That is a point that can happen in just as quickly as I said that right then. That's the moment of salvation. But the process that takes them on into becoming a lifetime and devoted follower of Jesus Christ is something that we press into. And until the new believer is encouraged, is firmly established in that lifestyle of discipleship, our work is by no means complete. So as we begin this particular lecture, let's clarify something of our role as disciple makers. Can I say to you, the role of a disciple maker is not the role of a preacher, a teacher, or a lecturer. The role of a disciple maker is, as we see here, a friend who walks a journey of discovery. A disciple maker must first be a friend to the one they are seeking to disciple. You see, people will remember much more about the things they discover on the journey than about the things that we tell them. Now, part of our strategy in this course, yes, there's been the lecture dimension of what we're doing, the, the straight teaching. But I've been encouraging you to do the studies in this little book, Journey into Discipleship. I've been encouraging you in other practical things, such as memorizing the scripture. You've had time between each of the lectures to think about the issues that are involved for you. Why? Because I am hoping and praying that by the ministry of the Holy Spirit deep within you, the things that I have been teaching have been coming into your life as an experience, as a personal discovery. And I know this, if I was to meet you in some year's time and, and talk to you about this time of teaching that you have encountered through uh, a class, through these videos, or through the online medium, it wouldn't surprise me if the things that you remembered most were not things I'd actually said, but things that you have discovered either during or subsequent to the experience of being part of this course. And so we have a very clear aim as part of all of this. And that is to help our friend become a devoted disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our focus isn't just simply to have them accept a set of teaching. Our focus is to help them develop their own relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is ultimately in that relationship that they will go on and they will grow on. You know, the time will come when you and I will become irrelevant to their journey. This series of teaching may be a significant step forward in your journey. But I hope that this series of teaching becomes irrelevant to you in the foreseeable future. Not that I want you to forget it in that sense, but I want the things that you have learned here to become so much a part of who you are that the ongoing aspects of the journey continue to challenge you, to lead you, to inspire you as you press on in the things of God. So our focus is to help a person develop their own relationship. You see, if ultimately all that a person becomes is a copy of you or me, then we have not built a disciple. We want them to become like Jesus. We want them to be his followers, not our followers. We are simply big brothers and big sisters who help them along that particular journey. Now, what I want to do to help to clarify some of these principles with you is to lead you through a series of 10 basic principles that I've discovered 
in this ministry of making disciples that are important things to remember. If you get these 10 principles in your mind and focus your understanding and your operation around these, what you're going to discover is that the impact in the life of the person whom you are discipling will be much stronger. So let's look at these 10 principles that I think we need to keep in mind. And, you know, although they are principles particularly involved in the area of discipleship, these principles really apply in so many areas of Christian ministry. Well, let's consider them together. Principle number one. Discipleship needs to be seen as a shared journey. It's not me, the teacher, instructing you, the student, how to be a disciple. No, this journey must be an opportunity to learn together. And when you are recruiting, if you like, someone who you want to help grow in their walk with Jesus, it's not, come on, let me preach to you. No, come on. Join me on a journey in which together we can discover more of what it means to be a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we've said already, our goal is to teach them how to learn for themselves. Because the time will come when we're no longer there and they will need to go on and grow on in their journey. As you progress through the different courses uh, in the Foundation School of Ministry, whether by class or in the online environment, what we're hoping is that you will continue in a journey of understanding more of what it means to follow Jesus. That as your understanding of different areas of Bible teaching uh, grow, that that journey will enable you to learn for yourself. Principle number one, disciple making is a shared journey. Come on, let's grow and learn together. Principle number two, your lifestyle and example must mod model Christian discipleship. Now, at the most basic level, if who you are, if what you are saying, what you are teaching this young believer, if they cannot see it being lived out in the day-to-day -day realities of your life, then let me tell you what will happen. They'll lose interest very quickly. We have a little saying we use quite a lot in uh, the Foundation School of Ministry and some of our related courses, it's this. You teach what you know, you impart who you are. And ultimately, making disciples is not simply about teaching knowledge, it's the impartation of a lifestyle. It's the impartation of heart. And to do that impartation, you have to be living the lifestyle. And so your lifestyle and example must model Christian discipleship. Now, think about this very simply in the family environment. Children ultimately will become what their parents are. Now, you know, you very quickly get to know when you, you meet a young child and see the way they function, the way they play, the way they speak, you very quickly get a picture of the home they've come from. If that child is foul-mouthed and, you know, cantankerous and all the rest, you can guess that that's the kind of home they've come from. Now, it doesn't matter how many times a parent say, haven't I told you not to use those words? If those are the words they hear mum and dad using day after day, that's the way the child will speak. Children become what their parents are, not what they tell them to be.
And so it is in this whole process of discipleship. Your actions speak louder than your words, say the old proverb. And ultimately, when we are sowing into someone else's life, that sowing in will sow in so much of what is here in us. Because what they see will be reflected in what takes root. And if they see the truth being lived out in your life, that's what's going to impact their lives. Principle number three. Have a clear strategy in mind. You know, if you don't have something clearly in mind as to where you want to take this new person, this young disciple, you're not going to get anywhere. You start out a journey not knowing where you're going to go. You'll wander aimlessly around. But if you know where you're going, if the goal is clear, then it's easy to make plans to get there. And so that's why I've put on this screen the discipleship diagram, because I think this particular diagram gives us a very clear strategy. What we are ultimately wanting to establish in the life of our young disciple is a lifestyle of submission, abiding, a lifestyle in which the Holy Spirit is at liberty to bring about a transforming work, a lifestyle in which ultimately those who live around this person will see the transforming work of the Holy Spirit and be pointed to Christ themselves. And so ultimately, those who are watching your disciple the desire is that one day they too will come to that place of submission. Now, if that picture is clearly in your mind, if you've got that sense of this is where I want to lead my Christian friend, that's going to be a great help. Now, another aspect of that is to have a track to follow. Now, I keep uh, mentioning to you this little booklet journey into discipleship. But this is not the only tool available on this matter of discipleship. You go to a Christian bookshop, you will find excellent books by groups like uh, Campus Crusade for Christ and Navigators and many others that are simple pathways in this journey of discipleship. Now, the benefit of this one is obviously that it is built around the same principles that I am teaching you in this course. And you can get this online through our ministry. But what I'm saying to you is if you have a clear sense of where you want to go and how you're going to get there, it's going to be much easier. But what I say to you is this. Be well prepared for each time you meet with your disciple. You know, as a preacher, I spent a lot of time being ready, preparing my heart, preparing my mind, so that when I stand before that congregation, I know where I believe the Spirit of God wants to take me. I know what it is that I have to speak into people's lives. And it's that knowing, it's that understanding, it's that clarity of purpose. Yes, the Holy Spirit can then take that and the Holy Spirit can do things. And there are times when in the course of that message, the Holy Spirit might lead me quite in a different pathway from that which I thought would happen. That does happen sometimes. But it's that preparation beforehand which enables me to stand in the pulpit and say, Holy Spirit, now, take what I've prepared. You do with it what you want to do so that Jesus Christ is honoured. So be well prepared. Keep your vision clear. Be well prepared for each time you meet. Principle number four. Proceed at the pace they are learning, not at the pace of your program. Now, I can't speak about this too clearly. One of the things a teacher learns very quickly is that every person learns at a different rate. People are different. And they learn 
at different rates. And so what might be an appropriate rate of instruction and guidance and sharing in with one person you're discipling might be quite different for another person. You get someone who's a clear, think, a clear thinker, whose life is well ordered, and you sit them down and begin to teach them. Sometimes it can go like clockwork. You get someone who is a troubled person, who's come from a troubled background, who's in a sense turned to Jesus with a sense of desperation. Trying to help that person come into their journey and their relationship with Jesus can be a much more protracted time. We might talk about 10 weeks of Bible studies in, in journey into discipleship. But the truth is, with some people, that 10 weeks might almost be too long. With other people, 20 weeks isn't going to be enough. And so, as a disciple maker, proceed at the pace they are learning, not at the pace of a program. You're investing into someone's life for eternity. You're fulfilling a commission Jesus Christ gave to you. Whatever the investment that is required, give it. Don't lock it in to a time frame. You see, what we want to do is to teach them how to discover, not to tell them what to believe. This is not a catechism. This is not some declaration of faith. The journey into discipleship is about helping someone become a devoted disciple. And the process, though we might have a track that we are following, what we are out to accomplish ultimately is life transformation for that individual in the course of their journey. Principle number five. Help them to establish principles of Christian living. You know, the ways of the world that we were talking about in our last teaching time on the subject of temptation, we learned that, you know, temptation comes from the world, the flesh and the devil. And very often people come to Christ, particularly when they come to Christ from a background that is, is not a Christian background, when maybe they have been converted at university, converted at, at, in later stages of high school, maybe even in their early 20s or 30s or even later. People have often been living a lifestyle that we might say is anything but godly. Well... Helping that person to make the transition from a, a worldly lifestyle to a lifestyle that honours Jesus Christ can be a very challenging experience indeed. And so how do we help them to establish the principles of Christian living? One of the first things I want to get people to do is to read the Bible. And in the back of Journey into Discipleship, we've put um, a, a Bible reading uh, guide that you can use. This one particularly follows through the Gospel, uh, the, the Acts of the Apostles. And over the 10 weeks that you are meeting with this person or longer, there are five Bible readings for each week. Why not seven? Well, our experience is that if you can get someone who is new to this, to be reading the scripture five out of seven, that's going to be a much greater encouragement to them than if they're aiming for seven and inevitably missing a few. We're about encouragement, not discouragement. And so we want to help them to get to know the word of God. We want to think about them uh, learning about issues like being part of God's family in worship. There are going to be situations which maybe they had have lived in and been part of when they were someone out there in the world which are not appropriate and not edifying for someone who's now said I belong to Jesus. Now there are many of these changes that the Spirit of God is going to make in his own time 
But you know, there are sometimes things that we need to help our disciple understand that these are contrary to the word of God. And so if we see things in their lifestyle that are, are deliberately contrary to the word of God, then sometimes we need to, to show them from the word of God why some of these things are not appropriate for one who says, now I belong to Jesus. But I want you to remember this. Encourage much, rebuke little. One word of encouragement will go much further than 10 words of rebuke. Do you get that? One word of encouragement will go further than 10 words of rebuke. And so I encourage you, yes, encourage much, rebuke little, show them the way Jesus wants them to live not rebuke them for that which you perceive is wrong in their life. They will love you more for that positive encouragement than that rebuking spirit. Principle number six. Discipleship requires regular meetings. Now, if we are going to help someone on this journey into their walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's no good saying, well, look, we'll meet this week and then, oh, sorry, I'm not available for the next four or five weeks. Um, can, can we get together one? No, that's not going to work. One of the things I realise, and, and you can show yourself this, just get a bit of paper and write the word disciple and write underneath it the word discipline. You'll discover there's only two letters different between the word disciple and the word discipline. In our English language, if you're going to learn to be a disciple, there has to be a measure of learning disciplines. One of the courses coming up uh, later in the Foundation School is our Spiritual Development 2 course and the subtitle of that is the practices and disciplines of the Christian life and you'll discover that there are different things that we learn along the way which help us in terms of living out this Christian journey and so one of the early ways you can teach your disciple is by this matter of establishing a regular pattern of meeting together. I strongly suggest to you that wherever possible, this should be about once a week. Now, you may meet with your disciple on other occasions. Uh, you may meet them at church. You may meet them socially. But I would encourage you to encourage them to find a point each week where you can regularly get together for the purpose of exploring this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, a ministry like discipleship requires commitment. If you are not pre prepared to be committed in a disciplined way to what you are asking your disciple to do, then don't expect them to be committed to it as well. I remind you, Jesus spent three years working with those whom he called his disciples. And particularly with the 12, as we'll discover when we are exploring the subject of the life of Christ. The last 18 months of Jesus' life were almost totally invested in the 12. He gave a significant part of his life on earth to disciple these men who would one day lead the church. And so when you're going to be involved with someone in a discipleship journey, set aside a time and do your best with you and your disciple to find a convenient time when the two of you can meet together. And my strong suggestion is to make that a weekly event when you can sit down. Generally speaking, I suggest about an hour 
is a good time frame. You don't want it to drag on and on. You don't want these discipleship events to be something which, uh, oh no, here we go again. So try and keep your time to somewhere about an hour. Principle number seven. Expect the disciple to be actively involved in the journey of discovery. This is not something that we can simply hand to a person on a plate. I can't just go, here you are, go do these studies and you'll be discipled. It doesn't work like that. As we've already seen, there's a regular ongoing commitment. But if someone is serious about the journey, they are going to be prepared to be committed to. And so we want to expect and encourage them to be actively involved in this journey. So what kind of involvement are we looking for? Well, one of the things you'll find in Journey into Discipleship is that at the end of each lesson, there is a scripture verse to be memorized. Can I encourage you to memorize that verse of scripture? It's usually there in a little box. And I'd like to encourage you to memorize that verse. If you have done some earlier courses in our series, if you've already completed Introduction to the Bible, you will have had some lectures in that on how to memorize and, and the values of it. And you may well already be on that journey. But if you haven't learned those things already, then perhaps you might like to consider taking that subject on Introduction to the Bible and learn the value of memorizing Scripture. But encourage your disciple to memorize scripture. Encourage them to look ahead and to perhaps do some of the next lecture. So normally I would say to a person, when you first begin with someone, take them through the first. Now, if you look in uh, Journey into Discipleship, you'll discover that each lesson is really just three pages. So there's a bit of an introduction, some verses of scripture to look at, uh, a, a little bit of reading there, some questions to respond to, a verse of scripture to memorize, and then an opportunity for them to do some thinking and reflection about what they've discovered. In the very first time, lead them through it. Show them how it works. And then suggest to them that before you meet next time, that they might look at uh, that the next study themselves and so that when you come together it's not just a case of you leading them step by step through when you come together it's much more a process of well what did you discover there what were some of the things that have come out oh yeah well I've been thinking about so and so you'll get much more they will get much more out of this time if they've done some preparatory work teach them about having a regular secret place or quiet time. Now, in our first series on uh, personal spiritual development, the secret place with God, we have explored a great deal about the principles and practice of the secret place. If you haven't completed spiritual development one, well, there's another course we encourage you to sign up for very quickly, particularly in this online environment. And we'll give you a great deal of input there about how you meet regularly with the Lord Jesus in the secret place. One of the things you discover out of that is the principle of spiritual journaling. And I don't want to go on to talk about that. But if, if you understand that, well, encourage your disciple to begin to write a letter to Jesus. That's how we teach the basic principles of journaling. Write a letter to Jesus. And in these kind of interactions between the person and the Lord Jesus Christ, all kinds of valuable things can happen. So expect them to be actively involved. Principle number eight. Oh, let me go back. Don't miss this one and hold them accountable. If you have set something for them to do, don't just ignore that when you come together next time. Come back and say, look, you know, last time I asked you to do so and so, how did you go? How did you go with memorizing scripture? Do you want to give it a try? That 
point of accountability will encourage a person to press onwards. Principle number eight, take them with you in ministry. When you get involved in this journey with a new believer, it's not simply about getting them to understand a series of principles. It's about them embarking on a journey with Jesus. I love to take someone I'm discipling along to church. If I'm going to a conference somewhere and I think that uh, the, the things that are being taught are going to be helpful to them. Perhaps I'm going off on ministry somewhere. Maybe I'm going to preach at another church. I say, hey, listen, why don't you come with me? Look for ways in which you can engage. Maybe it's, it's things like going to visit someone who's sick. Hey, I'm going to visit old Jack who's in hospital. Would you come with me? And let them be there and observe as you sit with old Jack and hold his hand and pray with him and just let the love of Jesus pour through you. Engage your new disciple in areas of Christian ministry. Just let them see and walk with you in your life's journey. Principle number nine, don't be overprotective. Now, this is very important. You cannot live a person's Christian life for them. You have to allow room for them to learn and grow from their own experiences. You can't be with them 24 hours a day to stop them getting themselves into trouble. Sometimes when you get back together, they will recount things that have happened that you might say, well, that was less than helpful. Well, okay, what's the, the challenge? Encourage much, rebuke little. And so you need to be there. Even when they're troubled, listen, encourage, help them to see God in their situation. Don't be overprotective. Don't be like a clucky hen around a chicks. Give them room to breathe and to grow. And of course, finally, in these principles, pray for your disciple often. More things are accomplished through prayer than we will ever know. And it is your intercession for this one whom you are discipling, which is going to have the greatest impact. My friends, it's ultimately the work of the Spirit of God to lead a person into that deeper journey with Jesus. You can be one of the tools that the Holy Spirit uses. The things that you share with them, the life journey and the life experience that you've lived will all be helpful. But at the end of the day, they have to walk the journey. And so sometimes it's hard, but we just have to stand back and pray and leave it to God. Well, there's 10 principles that I've found are very helpful. Just in the remaining time we have, let me share with you some very practical things that I've found helpful in terms of meeting with a person whom you want to disciple. Well, as I've already said, a weekly meeting is a good idea. Now, even if you meet with that person at other times, maybe there's someone in your church family and you encounter them in church, or maybe they're part of the, the social network that, that you are part of and you see each other at different social events. That's not discipling. Set aside a time to meet with them for discipleship purposes. That's important. Be well prepared and know your material. If you front up and, oh, now, hang on, um, um, what, what are we looking at today? Uh, what were we? We, we were study three or, or four? Oh, we were actually four. Uh, okay. Where it's, you know what that says? You're not prepared. You have not been prepared to put any investment into this. I would encourage you, every time you're discipling someone, to have a new blank copy of this yourself. And if you set your disciple the task of looking through the next study, maybe you've just completed three and you're going on to study four, then you do study four before you come together so that the things are fresh in your mind. And it is that opportunity that will bring that mutual learning experience. 
Be well prepared and know your material. Be interested in their life. When you get together, it's not just a matter of saying to them, OK, let's get down to the study. Hey, what's been happening this week? Have you seen something in your life that Jesus has been doing? Oh, yeah, I had this, this, this amazing time the other morning in, uh, when I was in the secret place. Oh, come on, tell me about it. Or it might be, oh, yeah, I've had a rotten week this week. You know, things just didn't go well. I sort of felt like the devil was around behind every corner and every time I, I tried. Okay. Be engaged with their life. Listen. You know, sometimes we have to be willing to set our preaching or our teaching or instructional journey to one side because there's something happening in their life. Use something like journey into discipleship and introduce them to it. Don't just give it to them and say, look, I really think you should work your way through this. You know where it'll go? It'll go home, it'll go on a bookshelf shelf, and it will never be used. Before you think about discipling anybody, you should have worked your way through this. Hopefully, through this series of lectures, as we've asked you to work on the studies, you've done it. If so, then this little booklet is already going to be familiar territory. If it's not this one, get something else. Something that will enable you to have a clear track to work on. Introduce it to your friend. Show them how it works. Do the first study with them. Set them a goal to, to at least begin on the second study. See where they've gone. Talk with them about what they've learned. If they haven't done anything, don't rebuke them. Just say, oh, well, come on, let's do it together. If you've got that sense of where you're going, it's going to mean a great deal. Be alert for other issues that might arise. You know, learn to read body language. So your disciple arrives and it's very clear to you that this hasn't been a good week. You know, something's happened and you can tell just by those first moments that they are quite discouraged. OK. Listen, invite them to talk to you about it. Don't force them to tell you things they don't want to tell. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. OK. Well, is there anything I can do? How are you feeling? And sometimes we have to be willing to set aside the things that we had prepared and planned and just go with where they're at. So be alert for other issues that might arise. Maybe they've encountered someone who's given them some Christian teaching that's totally confused them. OK, well, come on. Tell me what, what's happened. Listen. Make sure you listen and then help them. If you know how to lead them into the truth of Scripture as they search through that. There is a practical element to this course. Now, if you're doing this course as part of the Foundations School of Ministry in a, a local church setting, then there is opportunity for you to explore some of the practical dimensions of discipleship in, if you like, an extra unit. And this will be an opportunity for you to explore the experience. We'll encourage you to get one person or maybe a group and to meet with them 10, 12 or whatever weeks it, it takes. We'll encourage you to meet weekly with the disciples. You'll be supervised by a mentor. And that mentor will be someone whom you can relate to, will it require you to give brief weekly reports of, of what's happening as you meet the things that you are learning, as you meet with your disciple. And at the conclusion of that 10 or 12 weeks, to submit a reflection that uh, will come together with the other things you've done. Now, if you would like to uh, do such a thing and it will become a, a full subject for you in the foundation school. If you'd really like to, to get involved in that very personal level of discipleship in an accountable way, why don't you talk to your school leader in your local church situation? In the current moment, uh, 
This is not available in the online environment, but we encourage those of you who are looking online to have a fresh look at our website at lttnministries.org.au. Look under Foundation School of Ministry where you first looked and you'll see if this subject, this practical element of discipleship is available there and you can simply click on that and we will lead you to. You'll see whether that is available or not available. Well, this brings us to the close of our series on discipleship. Over this past 10 weeks, if it has been in that weekly environment for you, or this 10 series of uh, teaching, we've explored what it means to be a devoted disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I sincerely hope that there is some pictures very firmly embedded in your mind. I hope that you've got an understanding of the issues of submission and abiding and of what it means to live a transformed life that enables others around you to see. I sincerely hope that through all of this, you've come into a deeper walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus longs for people to be his true disciples, to live a lifestyle that is devoted to him, not one day a week, not even a few hours every day, but 24 seven. That's the life of a disciple. That's why he sent out his disciples, go into all the world and make disciples. Reproduce yourselves in the lives of others so that I may reproduce myself in them. That's the call. That's the commission we have been given. And so I trust that this series of teaching has enriched you in your walk with God. It is our hope and our prayer that you won't stop here, that you'll have a look at some of the other courses that are coming up either in your local church situation or in Foundation School of Ministry online and pick up other courses that will help you in your own walk with God, that will help you in your understanding of the scripture, that you will press on, press on to be an effective servant of Jesus, to be a disciple who's devoted to him, through whom the Holy Spirit can live and work, that you will be fruitful in the kingdom of God. I trust that God will richly bless you as you continue on in your journey as a devoted disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ.